Hello again everyone, and today I have a new autofocus lens from Sam Yang to share with you, their AF 12mm f2 e. It's for Sony's E-mount mirrorless cameras, and it gives an APS-C image circle. The lens will cost $400 US when it comes out, which could be quite a reasonable price if the image quality is good enough, and I would like to thank Sam Yang for sending me a copy of this lens for evaluation, although as usual, this is a totally independent review. Sam Yang's original manual focus 12mm f2 lens was an absolute classic, very popular among all kinds of photographers, and I did a lot of video making with my own copy of that lens a few years ago, taking it to Turkey with me for some guerrilla video making. It was also a popular lens for astrophotography, with its ultra-wide angle combined with a bright maximum aperture. I'll put a link to my review of that original lens in the description. So, it makes a lot of sense for Samyang to be releasing a nice new autofocus version of it. Let's take a look. As I already mentioned, it's only designed for Sony's APS-C E-mount cameras. Here's what you see on a full-frame camera. The lens itself is quite small and very lightweight, at only 220 grams or half a pound. It actually feels quite solid too, and tightly assembled. It's mostly made of plastic, but it is at least based on a metal lens mount with a very narrow weather sealing gasket. The lens's only control point is a rubberized manual focus ring. It turns very smoothly and works quite responsively with a focus motor. As you can see here, the lens exhibits a moderate amount of focus breathing as you focus in and out. The lens's autofocus motor is reasonably fast, accurate and silent. You can feel the lens rumbling in your hand a little as it works, but it doesn't make any noise. The lens has a 62mm filter thread, which is always useful on an ultra-wide angle optic, and you can put one thick, or two very thin, filters onto it without seeing any vignetting. It comes with its own little case, and a very simple plastic hood. The hood fits on very well, but a minor criticism is that it can't be mounted onto the lens backwards for storage. Overall though, there's nothing really to fault here with its build quality, it's really small, very light, and works perfectly nicely without anything getting in your way. Let's take a look at image quality now. Sam Yang have told me that the lens uses the same optical formula as the original manual focus version, except that they've improved the coatings for better contrast and better work against bright lights. Well, let's see how it performs on my little Sony A5100 with its 24 megapixel APS-C sensor. Straight from f2, image quality is brilliantly sharp in the middle with very good contrast. Over in the corners, we do see some resolution and contrast remains good, but the very edges are soft, and more noticeably, there's a lot of chromatic aberration going on in the corners. At f2.8, those corners look a little sharper and brighter. Stop down to f4, and we get another slight improvement. The lens stays this sharp down to f11, where a little softness begins to creep in due to the effects of diffraction. Overall, this lens's optics are based on an old design, its sharpness is good, but you still need to stop down to f4 to get very sharp corners. Its main issue though, as you've seen, is that colour fringing on contrasting edges in the corners. Let's move on and take a look at distortion and vignetting. These pictures are taken with in-camera corrections turned off. The lens projects a moderate barrel distortion here, nothing shocking though. At f2, the corners are a little darker from vignetting. The good news is that that corner darkness only falls quite gently into the image, so it's not very noticeable. The not so good news is that it never really goes away, even if you stop down the aperture to f8 or so. So, neither distortion nor vignetting are strong here, so correcting your images won't have too much of an impact on image quality. Let's take a look at close-up picture quality now. The lens can focus to about 20 centimeters, bringing you right into smaller subjects very well. At f2, close-up image quality remains very sharp, although the eagle-eyed among you will notice just a touch of magenta color fringing on contrasting edges. Stop down to f2.8 for perfect image quality to kick back in, so it's still a very good performance here overall. When it comes to flaring, we see an average performance here. 
quite a few flaring artifacts are visible, albeit small ones, and we also get a glare when bright lights are on the periphery, so it's probably worth keeping your lenses hood on when shooting in critical situations. However, I can say that this performance is certainly a big improvement over the original manual focus lens, which was pretty weak when it came to flaring. And while we're working in the dark, let's look at coma levels. Even at f2, bright points of light see little in the way of coma smearing, although a little colour fringing is visible here. Stop down to f2.8 to see it tamed down a bit. Stop down to f11 if you want to get sun stars out of this lens, and if you really need them, stop down to f16 and they get a little bigger and more defined. And finally, bokeh. If you get close to your subject and shoot at f2, then some nicely out of focus backgrounds will be your reward. The good news here is that they mostly look quite smooth, which is no mean feat for an ultra wide angle optic, although very difficult backgrounds can get a little busy sometimes. Overall, well, the original manual focus Samyang 12mm f2 lens was a firm favourite of many APS-C shooters, and it was one of the first lenses to prove the potential for wide angle mirrorless camera lenses to be smaller and brighter than their digital SLR counterparts. My chief complaints about it back then were its chromatic aberration, its lack of autofocus, and its nasty flaring when bright lights came in the picture. Well, Samyang have now fixed two of those problems, leaving behind only the chromatic aberration, which you can correct in editing anyway. So that does leave us with an incredibly desirable and useful ultra wide angle APS-C lens, which pretty much everyone is going to love. Despite its chromatic aberration issues, everything else about this lens is pretty much perfect, and it's just so fun and useful to use, not to mention good value for money. $400 is a very reasonable price for it, so it does have to come highly recommended. I hope you've enjoyed this review, found it helpful, I really enjoy putting them together. If you'd like to support the channel and keep these reviews trucking on, then take a look over on my Patreon page. For $3 a month you can get exclusive bonus content uh, every month, so yeah, check it out and take care, God bless.